What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be giving you a rundown of all the new features in iOS 9. Apple just announced this. Uh, it's going to be out later in the fall for everyone, but I have the developer preview right now. Uh, this is the beta 1, uh, so let's go ahead and check it out. Alright, so the first thing we're going to check out is the new Siri, uh, which as you can see, Siri has an all new UI. It looks really cool. Uh, it's got this like rainbow like colors that like moves around as you talk. And as you see, it's picking me up here. <laughs> now Siri's actually gotten a lot smarter now and it can understand a lot of new questions and do some things for you. I'll go ahead and show you now. Show me photos from North Carolina. Ta-da! So you can actually use Siri to search your photos. The guy in the demo, he was actually like, show me photos from this trip uh, in August. So you can actually say a specific place uh, and a date or a time. Siri is also better at reminders now. Remind me to get my coffee off the top of my car when I get in and drive. Okay, I'll remind you. So yeah, Siri can actually tell when you're driving now, so I'm reminding myself that so I don't leave my coffee on top of the car. You can actually now even tell Siri to remind you of something you're looking at on the device at the time. So like right now, I've got my YouTube channel pulled up, I can tell her to do this. Remind me about this later today at 3 o'clock. One sec. Ta -da. I'll remind you. So basically what she did is she took the YouTube link, uh, as you see the little Safari icon there, and she just set a reminder for it and at 3 o'clock. It doesn't have to be a link in Safari though, it could also be a text message from someone or really just anything you're looking at. Remind me about this later today. Okay, I'll remind you. So there you go, I remind myself about a text message. Now I'll go ahead and type in the keyboard field uh, so you can check out the new font, uh, which is called San Francisco. And I kind of feel weird about it. It's, you can definitely tell the difference. Uh, you may not be able to on the video, but when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, this looks weird. It only took me a minute to get used to it, but definitely when I first looked at it, uh, it was a little bit odd. Now they actually added a new feature to Siri called Proactive. And uh, basically what this does is it looks at how you use your phone throughout the day and what you're doing at certain times, like say you go for a morning run. Uh, well, in the morning, it's going to go ahead and suggest up because it knows you listen to music. Hey, here's a playlist you should listen to. Or maybe when you get in the car, you've been listening to an audiobook. It's going to automatically, on your lock screen, uh, suggest up for you to play that audiobook. Another thing Siri will do now is actually go through your email and pull out different invites for meetings or appointments and stuff like that that you've got and automatically add it right to your calendar for you. Another thing is actually pretty cool. If a number calls you and you don't recognize a number, but that number is somewhere located in an email, your iPhone will actually go through the email and suggest a name that could possibly match up to the number that could be calling you. That's pretty awesome. All right, the next thing we're gonna check out is a new search for iOS 9. You can still swipe from the top uh, down and go to that, or you can go over to the left and you actually get a full detailed search uh, and a view right here, which is kind of their competitor to Google Now. Uh, as you can see right here, you've got quick access to your Siri suggestions, which are different contacts you may wanna call based on who you've spoken to recently. And then you also got different apps which you may wanna open or check out that you haven't downloaded already. Right below that is nearby, which actually gives you quick access to some buttons right here uh, for finding parking, gas stations, restaurants, fast food, post office, uh, etc. That's pretty cool. And then right below that uh, is news. So actually uh, Apple gives you a news feed right here in your search results. But you can actually tap show more on that also and uh, just read a little bit more detailed view of it or tap on any of the articles to go to them. Now it doesn't just look different when you scroll to the left. It's also more advanced and more featured. I uh, see so when you search, you can actually get more detailed views on stuff. So actually search movies. I tried this a few minutes ago and it was wasn't working, but I'll try one more time. Uh, so as you see, when I'm typing, it's suggesting different little stuff to me. I'm just typing in San Andreas right here. See, so yeah, I'm searching San Andreas. What's supposed to happen is the movie would come up and I'm actually able to play the trailer right here inside of the thing. I'll go ahead and show you the video from Apple right here since I can't get it to work on mine. Again, this is beta. Uh, but yeah, you're supposed to have more detailed search results and you can also search stuff inside of the apps. So let's say I was searching for San Andreas the movie. Uh, I would actually go into my Fandango app and pull information out of the Fandango app right here into the search. So that should be cool uh, when it works. But as of right now, uh, the search isn't too great. Uh, but you can't see all the information right there. So that's pretty cool. This is definitely useful, but I wouldn't say anywhere near as good as Google Now. Uh, they definitely have a lot of work to do before they can get up to that level. All right, next thing we're gonna check out is the new Wallet app, which used to be Passbook. They actually did away with Passbook and now it's called Wallet. Not much has actually changed in the app though. You can still add all your cards and stuff here and pay for everything using Apple Pay and your iPhone. One thing they are doing though is actually adding the ability to have loyalty and reward cards as well as credit and debit cards through different like stores like JCPenney's and stuff like that. And then of course Apple announced that Apple Pay is coming to the UK. Uh, so you guys are gonna have that now as well as lots 
lots of other like credit cards and stuff like that coming along. Uh, so just more support for more people to use Apple Pay, which hopefully they finally add me because I still am not able to do it. My bank does not work with it. I've just got my Starbucks cards on here. Apple also announced a new Apple Pay reader. They're doing a square. Uh, it's basically like a little box that businesses can get. It's super cheap uh, and you can pretty much just tap your iPhone to it and it's an Apple Pay reader. So they're pretty much making Apple Pay easy and affordable to have at pretty much any business. Next up, we're going to check out the new Notes app in iOS 9, which as you can see right here, they've added some new stuff to it. Let's go ahead and tap continue. All right, so here's the new Notes app. I'm going to go ahead and tap Notes. I'll go ahead and do a new note right here. They added this new little plus button. You go ahead and tap that and it brings up this toolbar, which gives you different formatting options. Uh, so I can go ahead and add a little checklist here if I wanted to. I can go ahead and do that. And that's pretty easy. All I have to do is tap that button and I can check all these off if I wanted to. Or I can tap right here and I can do different titles and headers. If I want to do a title right there and make it big, I can do that. Or you can actually tap the camera button and you can select a photo from your photo library or uh, actually take one right from the camera, which is what I'm going to do. You barely see me, but that's all right. You can use photo and right there it is, right inside of the note. They also added this new button, which I like to call a squiggly. I go ahead and tap on that and it actually lets you draw right inside of the notes app. You got these handy little tools down here, which you can switch back and forth through. I'll go ahead and do this and I'll just write tie was here. It's terrible. Go ahead and tap done, and right there it is, adds it right to your note as a drawing. You can even now save links from Safari right to your notes. I go ahead and tap that little button right there, tap notes, and then it gives you the option to save it right there. That's, that's pretty cool. Now say you've got tons of notes here, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do with different pictures and links and all kinds of stuff. Oh, well, that's what this button's for. Tap that little button, and right there are all of your attachments right inside of your uh, notes app, and you can see them all right there and get quick access to them. They also added some new features to the Maps app. I go ahead and tap the info button right here, and tap transit, and there you you go. As you can see, finally, uh, this is a long way to feature. Apple has finally added transit directions uh, to their maps. You can search Siri now and ask it for transit directions. It can navigate you through the whole thing. Uh, really nice, really easy. I may not use this, but I know a lot of people are going to. And if you're wondering, here's a list of the cities that the new transit directions are rolling out to first. Apple also took the newsstand app, which had normally been in this folder for me. I don't use this where I always put it. Uh, and they actually replaced it with a new app called News. Now we don't have it yet, uh, but it is coming soon. And basically what it is, is Apple's new news reading app, sort of like Flipboard. It's pretty much a clone uh, of that. It looks just like it. It's pretty much going to kill Flipboard or what most people use to read news because it's a really simple, uh, easy interface to just browse through news articles. It's personalized so you can select what you want to see. Uh, it looks really good. The pictures are really nice and yeah, uh, it looks like something I'd probably use. And finally, a new feature in iOS 9 we should have had a long time ago. I go into settings, go to battery, and now you have an option for low power mode. I'll go and try this out, turn it on. Uh, and yeah, there you go. I'm in low power mode. I'm sure you guys have been there where your battery's getting low, so you turn on your brightness and you turn off your Bluetooth and you switch everything off uh, just to try to save battery. Well, that's pretty much what that low power mode switch does. Uh, it turns different little levers and stuff like that uh, and saves the most battery it can on your iPhone. And Apple actually says it's gonna extend your battery life if you turn that on for up to three hours. Three hours seems like a lot, but either way, if it extends your battery life any, uh, that feature is awesome. The iPhone is also getting the new app switcher, so as you see, it looks different than it did before. Uh, you can swipe through all of these. Here's all your apps you have open. Uh, you see the full preview of them, and you can just tap on any one you want to go to. Now let's take a look at iOS 9 on the iPad. Uh, they finally added a new feature that everybody's been waiting for. I wish they'd added it to the iPhone. Uh, I'd say this is probably one of the most anticipated iOS features, and it is multitasking. Now it's not too much different from what we had before. Uh, you can pretty much uh, swipe through all your apps right here. It's kind of just a different app switcher. It just has a different view. Uh, but you can see the full app preview right here on your iPad. And what you can do is if I wanted to go to settings right here, now let's say I wanted to open up another app while I'm in this one. What do I do? I swipe right over here from the right. And there we go. Earlier I was looking at the clock. Let's say I want to check on another app. You swipe down from the top right there and there's all your other apps you can open. Uh, so let's go to uh, Safari. So I actually have a Safari window right there on the side and I can use it just like I, I would normally use it. I can go uh, to apple.com and uh, I can go right there in Safari, uh, right there to the side. And there it is, apple.com. I can zoom in, I use it like you'd expect, and uh, then I can swipe it away and go right back to my settings app. Now I wouldn't consider that true multitasking because it's kind of just a little side window you swipe up and you can't really do anything in it uh, while this one's open. But you can, uh, of course, do the fast app switching, uh, and switch back and forth like this or close apps uh, by swiping up. Uh, it is multitasking, it's just not fully featured like it would be on the iPad Air 2. On the newest iPad Air 2, you can actually open up an app, uh, swipe this one from the side, and then tap a little bar in the middle, and you can actually resize and use multi-touch on both different apps at the same time.
time. And yeah, there you go. That's what multitasking looks like on the iPad. You'll also be able to watch videos in the background from apps like ESPN uh, or just whatever app adopts this feature. Uh, but you'll pretty much just be able to like drag the video around, do whatever in the window behind it. Uh, you can resize the little video playing there or push it to the side. It's actually really cool. Also on iOS 9, you get a new quick type keyboard on the iPad, uh, which is going to make typing a little bit more easier as you see right here on the left. Uh, you got new little scissors, which is going to give you cut, copy, and paste. There's two little buttons right there too. Uh, that's what those all do. And you can also use the keyboard as a trackpad. I'm actually going to go to the notes to show you this. That's actually really cool. Makes it a lot easier to type. So let's say I was in a note right here, and let's say I was just typing away, blah, 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 blah. Oops, I kind of erased it. But let's say I was typing away, go down a little bit, type more. Now let's say I want to go back up here where I was working before. All I have to do is take two fingers and boom the keyboard instantly becomes a trackpad. So I can get right up there at the top and now my selector or the highlighter thing is right there. You can also highlight text, it's kind of weird. You kind of go to where you want with two fingers and then you like tap and spread them apart in the direction uh, that you want to highlight. It's not the best way to highlight stuff, but definitely at least selecting stuff is a lot easier. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, showing you some new features in iOS 9. Uh, if you did, make sure you click the like button down below, subscribe to the YouTube channel right there if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.